So your doc ordered this ExoDX test or Epi test to figure out your risk of high grade prostate cancer, but you have no idea what it is. Let me explain it to you. Hey guys, Dr. Segal, you're a coach. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the ExoDX or Epi test and talk about it, explain every detail about it to you. But please first like, subscribe, comment. We wanna hear what you guys wanna hear us talk about. And at the end, I'm gonna give you my pearl of wisdom for one way we make the test super powerful. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But let's get right into it. So what is the ExoDX test, all right? So it's a urine test that assesses your risk of having high grade prostate cancer, okay? This is for men aged 50 and above with PSAs between 2 and 10. The nice thing about the test is it is a urine test, does not require an invasive blood draw, does not require a rectal exam before the test. Now, how does the test work? So if you think about the cells in your body, a lot of the cells in the body secrete these little round circular structure called exosomes, okay? These exosomes reflect the DNA, RNA, the genetic makeup of that cell. So the way the test works is it samples the exosomes from your urine and analyzes them to figure out your risk of having high-grade prostate cancer. So what are situations when we may order the ExoDX test, okay? So if we have a patient, let's say they're 65 and their PSA is 4.2, okay, and they want to avoid a biopsy, we may order this test to figure out their risk of having high-grade prostate cancer. So that's a clinical example of when we may order the test. Also, in older patients, let's say you got a guy that's 78 years old, he's got a PSA of 6.7 or so, and by an absolute cutoff range, we would say that PSAs 4 and above qualify as an elevated PSA. But this individual doesn't want to get a prostate biopsy. They've heard horror stories about it. And also, they may be on blood thinners, right? So it's a risk to do a prostate biopsy. Because if you're on blood thinners, oftentimes you have to hold your blood thinners before a prostate biopsy, and it always carries risk if you hold your blood thinners before a biopsy. So this person may say, listen, I'm scared about holding my blood thinners. That's another category of patient where we may order the ExoDX test. Let's take another clinical scenario, okay? Let's say you got a guy that's in his 50s. Let's say he's 52, had a PSA of 4.7. You do a biopsy. The biopsy is negative. You're happy, he's happy. Over time, you start to see that PSA creep up. And we want to distinguish whether that PSA is going up for natural reasons, meaning as you get older, your prostate gets bigger and your PSA will go up, and that is a normal aging phenomenon, or is it starting to go up because you have developed prostate cancer? In a patient like that, this test is useful to put you at a risk category of not having high-grade prostate cancer or potentially having high-grade prostate cancer. Also, a common reason why we order this test is patient request. Some people want to have all the information at their fingertips before they decide on whether they want to get a prostate biopsy done. So there are a number of tests that are not just the PSA and rectal exam that can figure out your risk of having high-grade prostate cancer or prostate cancer, and this is one of them. So oftentimes patients will request it. So we get these results. How do we urologists typically interpret these results? The key number that we look at is 15.6. That's the cutoff range. Below the number 15.6, meaning if you have a score that's below 15.6, it means you have a relatively low risk of having high-grade prostate cancer. I think the exact number is less than 10% chance of having high-grade prostate cancer. Above that number, it incrementally increases your risk of having high-grade prostate cancer. In fact, as you take the test from 15.6 and you go up towards the number 50 or 50%, 50 it's a one-to-one -one ratio, relatively a one-to-one -one ratio for your risk of having high-grade prostate cancer. What I mean to say is this, let's say you get your epi test done and your score is 27. That roughly corresponds to a 27% risk of having high-grade prostate cancer. And in general, that holds true up to about 50%. And then after that, it's not quite one-to-one -one anymore. A good validated test, 91.3% negative predictive value and 92% sensitivity for detection of Gleason 7 or above prostate cancer, the high-risk ones. So you're saying, 
Wow, this test sounds perfect. What are some of the downsides? Let me go through those one at a time. Number one is insurance coverage, right? So it is covered by Medicare in general, but some commercial insurances do not cover it. And it's always a shame when you get a big bill, especially if you consider somebody that may be very low risk for prostate cancer. Let's say you got a guy in his 60s. He has a PSA that is 2.1. He has no family history. He has a normal rectal exam. He is not African-American. He's overall a relatively low risk for prostate cancer. Then you order this test, and oftentimes patients have a gripe when they get a big bill for a test that they maybe did not need. So that is one downside. It's not universally covered. So one thing that's important to know is that patients have to absorb the results properly from the urologist. What I mean to say is that, let's say you have an epi score of 30, okay? And we say that that's about a 30% risk of having high grade prostate cancer. Sometimes that gets lost in translation to patients and they think that it's a 30% risk of having any kind of prostate cancer. That's not what this test is. Also, one thing that's important to know is that sometimes the test can give people a false sense of security. Remember, if you have a low epi test, let's say you have a score of eight, that's fabulous. It doesn't mean that it won't change over time. So what would be a shame is if that individual got a low epi score and they said, you know what, I don't have to ever see my urologist again. I am good forever. Things change over time. And certainly prostate cancer screening is a continued joint decision making process you should have with your urologist and PCP. So it's not static. So this brings me to my pearl of wisdom. How can we make the XODX test or the epi test more powerful? And one way we do this as urologists is we combine it with an MRI. An MRI is a picture of your prostate, okay? Multiparametric MRIs can identify whether you have a suspicious area in your prostate. The combination of the XODX test and the MRI of the prostate is kind of the mecca of personalized medicine, right? So we are seeing if you have a particular abnormality in the MRI, and also if you are at a higher risk of high-grade prostate cancer with the XODX test. With that information, let's say you're above the cutoff value of 15.6, and we see a suspicious area on the MRI of the prostate. We can say rationally, it makes a lot of sense to do an MRI-guided prostate biopsy, and that gives us the best chance of being able to correctly biopsy your prostate and not having a sampling error. People always ask us, Doc, which one's better, the MRI of the prostate or the XODX test? I don't think you can define one as better than the other. One thing that's important to know about the MRI is that it is a reader specific test, right? You have a radiologist that lo is looking at the MRI study and one radiologist might have a different interpretation than another radiologist for a particular MRI and put it in a low risk or high risk category because of it. The XODX test in that regard is probably more validated. Anyway, I hope that's helpful to you guys in understanding a little bit more about the XODX test. Thank you so much for listening. Please like, subscribe, comment. We want to hear what you guys want to hear us talk about. Thanks. Thanks.